Just another con- consumer says, Bible believing has left a concern for me. We don't, don't we follow Christ, not the Bible? Ooh, that is, you know what? We're going to talk about that right now because that sort of comes back to something that I want to share. So this week in church, um, we read our collect. So our, our, the prayer of the week, we read this prayer of the week. And, you know, I had just had a conversation with somebody about the Bible and how it's the authority of the Bible and it's only the Bible and it's got to be the Bible and we should take the entire thing literally when they actually don't mean to take the entire thing literally. What they mean is take the parts that I believe we should take literally, literally, and everything else is metaphor and allegory. Um, but the collect of the, of the week was was really quite beautiful. And it said... There it is. So I'm just, this is from our, our, our prayer for later. But what the Collect of the Week says, Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hmm. It doesn't say you've built your church on the foundation of the Bible. It says you've built your foundation. You've built the foundation of your church on the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity by spirit, by uh, in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple. Right? So the premise of this prayer is that what it recognizes is that the church was built on the teachings of the Christian church was built on the teachings of the apostles and those teachings came from Jesus. They taught on what Jesus taught them. And Jesus taught them based on what Jesus knew. And so that's how the church came into being. And yet now we go, well, no, the church, it's the Bible. Mm. The Bible is a guide. The Bible is a guide without question. The Bible is a holy book without question. The Bible is wonderful. It contains all things necessary for our salvation. We can read the Bible and within it we can see how we can see how God is calling us to transform our lives. We can see how God is calling us to to live. But the Bible the Bible is the story of a people as they've encountered God. The Bible's the story of a people as they have experienced God, as they have sought out God, as they have run from God, as they have been obedient to God, disobedient to God, as they had loved God, as they have hated God. That's what the Bible ultimately is, right? It's, it's really, it's a story of a people. It's, it's a description of a people. And, and within the description of the people, we come to see God from these various, from these various directions, from these various angles. But the Bible in and of itself, if it's used as, as sacred in that everything within it must be, then the Bible itself literally becomes a God. And, and that's not that's not what we're looking for here. We're not looking for a fourth member to the Trinity. We're, we're not, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and and the Good Book. This is about this is about understanding who it is we're actually called to follow. We're called to follow Christ. The Bible, in and of itself, is incomplete, and it tells us as much. The Bible tells us that it is incomplete. If at the end of the Gospel of John, I think it is, if everything Jesus did was ever, would ever be written down, there wouldn't be enough room in the world for all those volumes. Everything he said, everything he taught, we, we couldn't possibly write it all down. The Bible in and of itself is, in and of itself is, um, it self-describes itself as incomplete. It describes itself as incomplete and therefore it can't be God because God is not incomplete. It's an interesting thing that it does. It almost like safeguards itself from being held up as an idol. Don't hold me up as an idol. I'm not worthy, right? Don't hold my pages up as some sort of God character. I'm, I'm not worthy. Follow the one who is and the one who is, is Christ. Christ will get you home. Christ's teachings will bring you there. Live your life according to those teachings. 
determine the direction of your life, determine your words, determine your behaviors, determine your actions based on those teachings. Allow those teachings to be the things that that move you forward. Allow those teachings to be the things that, that help you transform your life. That's, this is a great book. The good book is a great book, but it is a book. It's not a God. It's not an idol. It's not something to be worshiped. It's something to be cherished. It is precious and it's beautiful, but it's not something for us to, it's not something for us to, um, it's not something that, that we should see as the be all and end all of God. God is greater than what's written in those pages. God is significantly greater than what's written in those pages. And so we have to, with the help of those pages, we have to find God and we have to continually look for God and we have to continually explore the possibility of God and we have to continually doubt God. Uh, just another consumer again, Bible believing has left, has left a concern for me. We don't, don't we follow Christ, not the Bible. We do follow Christ. We do follow Christ. And while you can say, well, but all of his words are in that book. It's true. But just because, just because the book contains the words doesn't mean the teaching stops at the book. When we follow Christ, we put the words that are in the book in action. We get on with it. We get on about our business. Amen.